talk about deploying your first smart contract on IPC, the interplanetary uh, consensus mechanism. So Steb just did a talk about FEM. Now, one of the great things being is FEM and FEVM is also what we are using on IPC. So if you weren't at the previous kind of talks sort of orientating about IPC, um, well, okay, so first of all, I'll just give, just give you a rundown about what we're gonna cover in this workshop. So first of all, we're gonna deploy an ERC-20 contract on the mycelium testnet, hopefully. Oh, there's a caveat I'll tell you in a second. Then we're gonna look at creating a standalone IPC subnet. And then we're gonna look at uh, creating a IPC network attached to the calibration layer one network. So these are all layer two networks effectively. Um, so we're gonna use an existing layer two. We're gonna create a layer two that's not connected to a layer one that's just on its own. And then we're gonna do a layer two that's actually a proper layer two connected to layer one. Now, uh, there are some caveats. The main caveat being is that this is really, really bleeding edge stuff. And the mycelium testnet was only uh, launched about a week ago. And I just got told this morning, um, about an hour ago, that it has just stopped uh, sinking and they're desperately trying to fix it at the moment uh, to get that working. So some of this may not work. Hopefully a lot of it enough will do to, sh to show you what you're doing here. I asked, as a, as a result of this, I asked Dali to create an image of a dragon, the, the phrase, there be dragons. I don't know if, that's, uh, if that translates well, but uh, often where there's areas where there's unknowns and stuff like that, you know, the, the warning is, be careful, there be dragons. Uh, so I asked Dali to create an image of a dragon eating a developer whilst they were trying to code, which is kind of how I felt whilst I was just getting stuff ready for this workshop and I heard that the network was down. Um, and it came up with this, which is a very polite dragon here that doesn't seem to be causing the developer too much anguish. And so I asked Dali, make the dragon eat the developer. And Dali came back and said, I'm sorry, I can't create images that depict violence or harm, including a dragon eating someone. However, I can create an alternative image that aligns with a more positive or neutral theme. Let me know if you have another idea or a different scene you'd like me to create. So we're going to try a more positive or neutral theme to this. Um, and we're going to talk through these steps. But like I said, there may be some things that don't work in this demo as I go through. Uh, very sorry about that. But hopefully this will give you the information that you need to be able to go away and uh, give this a shot yourself here. So a quick recap. So IPC, the Interplanetary Consensus System, is a series of subnets, subnetworks. And what is unique about IPC compared to a lot of layer two networks is that it is recursive. You can create subnets on subnets on subnets on subnets, right? So you can have, say, your main layer one. So in this case, we're using Filecoin. But equally, it could be applied to any other EVM blockchain. So it could be Ethereum. Um, you could, you know, potentially connect it to something like Bitcoin if you if you were able to uh, uh, create an adapter to do that. But it's independent of the of the layer one. And so you have then a number of subnets, and they could be designed for particular applications. So you could have a gaming subnet or a database subnet or a social media subnet or whatever. Uh, one of the examples uh, that Stev just gave was a storage subnet, right? So you could have the way that Filecoin works at the moment is that the, at the smart contract level, you can't access storage and that's because Filecoin is storing exabytes of data. If you think your gas cost is high, try loading an exabyte of data into your smart contract and see what happens. Um, it will not work. Um, and would be very expensive and take you to probably the end of time to actually do. So, uh, but you could deal with smaller amounts of data. The big problem is that Filecoin as a whole is not optimized for small data, it's optimized for storing large data. But you could create a subnet on IPC that is optimized for storing and retrieving smaller amounts of data. You know, a kilobyte of JSON, for example, for a profile or something like that. And you could also arrange subnets based around geographies. So you could have an Asia subnet, you could have an EU subnet. Within the Asia subnet, you could have an India subnet, for example. Um, so you can create subnets geographically located, and that might be useful for regulatory reasons, or just down to the physics of trying to get consensus across a network. You can only go send messages as fast as the speed of light. When we're trying to scale up to you know, millions, billions of transactions per second, things like just the time it takes to send a message from one side of the planet to the other, starts to become an issue. 
And if you think about our heritage at Protocol Labs and IPFS, we started off thinking about how would you design a protocol to communicate between planets, right? So that's where this kind of comes from because the idea is you might have a subnet on Earth, you might have a subnet on Mars or the moon or you know, wherever. So that's kind of the, the, the idea behind the architecture of this. So the way it's implemented is there's a number of uh, smart contracts, EVM smart contracts. There is the IPC gateway actor. That is a smart contract on the parent and that keeps track of all of the subnets that have been deployed uh, attached to that parent. And that deals with things like uh, finality, that deals with things like uh, checkpointing rules that the subnetwork has to uh, adhere to. Um, so it provides kind of a security uh, layer. It also provides things like a, a mailbox for subnets to be able to communicate between each other. So a message can be sent up to um, the uh, gateway actor, and then that can then go down as well to the other subnet. And then the other are the subnet actors, and a new subnet actor is spawned for each subnet, right? And that's, that relates to that specific um, subnet itself. And we have a tool, um, IPC CLI, that allows you to interact with it. And in this workshop, we're going to use that, that tool um, in the, the second and third steps of the, of the workshop. So first stage here we're going to do is we're going to deploy a ERC-20 contract to the um, IPC uh, mycelium testnet, right? So this is just like deploying to any other Ethereum-style network. So uh, let's see here. Um, let's start here. So um, we, we actually have some documentation here, um, docs. Uh, ipc.space and in there are a number of quick starts and one of those is deploying a contract to the mycelium subnet right so that's what we're going to go down now for this now there's actually a number of prerequisites here um, you actually this is slightly up need to be updated you don't need anything other than metamask for this initial uh, case because all we're doing is we're deploying to an existing subnet uh, those those uh, original um, prerequisites were for if you were going to be creating your own subnet, but they're not actually necessary here, so you can actually ignore them. It's just MetaMask that you need. So the first thing we need to do is we need to configure MetaMask to our network. So I can go to MetaMask, and I can go to Networks. Uh, I can go here. I can say Add Network. I'm not sure how well... Yeah, well, let me zoom in a bit here. Okay, let's go down here. Go down to the bottom, Add Network Manually. And I need to give it a name. So uh, mycelium, that's the name of the testnet. Um, the RPC URL, and that is in the documentation here, it is this address here. And the chain ID, which is this ID here. And a currency symbol, it uses um, Filecoin, fill, and it's on the test net, so it's tfill, right? So that's what I'm going to put down there, tfill, right? So that is configuring MetaMask to connect to the Mycelium network, the network that I just said fell over about an hour ago before this talk. So we'll see what happens here. I think it's actually still accepting transactions, but it's just not synchronizing with the main network above it. So I believe for what we're doing here, this, this will work. So I'm going to switch to Mycelium. And I should have here a network. So let me just double check here. Am I on Mycelium? Yeah, I'm on Mycelium. I've got a network. I'm actually going to create a new account here. Um, add an account, add a new account. Uh, Phil Vanguard test. That's me. That didn't seem to let me. Try again. Sorry, what was that? 
If you scroll down the bottom, there's add account down at the bottom. It should be down the bottom of that list. Okay. For some reason, it is not letting me add that account. Okay, well, we'll use an existing account I've got here. So I've got an existing account. The main thing I was then going to have to show you is you're going to have to go to the um, the testnet faucet, uh, which whose address is faucet.mycelium.calibration.node.glyph.io. It's quite a lot. It's in, it is listed in the uh, documentation here. If you scroll down, it shows you how to add the network, uh, how to add the address here. Um, and there is a link on here to the faucet somewhere on here. Uh, it's on here somewhere. Oh yeah, here we go, TFIL on the public faucet. So that link there will take you to this faucet in which you would put your address and it would then transfer funds to you. Now, we may even see that working, let's just see uh, like I said, I'm not sure how much of the network is working. So I've got 29.8 TFIL there. Uh, if I do that and hit receive, let's see if this works. It reckons it's on its way. Um, this is not working? Okay. Okay. Yeah, like I said, about an hour before this talk, or before this talk was scheduled to be, which was an hour earlier, the network stopped. So it seems like it is not, that bit is not, working there, which is really a shame um, because I think the Block Explorer was showing. Right. OK, here we, here we go. So here's the Block Explorer and it says the last transaction was five hours ago. Um, so somebody is working on getting this going again. So hopefully this will be going again in the morning. So um, you're just going to have to trust me on this, which is obviously the worst thing to say in a blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, talk, because the whole point of this is you don't have to trust me. So hopefully tomorrow you won't have to trust me and you can try it again when we get it running there. But, um, so. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna run our own subnet in just a minute and we'll go, we'll go through there. The one thing we won't have is a block explorer for our own subnet, but we'll be able to at least, we'll be able to show it. But anyway, so I've created the mycelium network here. I will have gone to the faucet. I will have put my address in. I will have funded it. So I will end up with an account in my MetaMask with some funds in uh, there that I can transact with, right? I can then go and deploy a standard contract from um, using something like Remix. So I can go to remix.ethereum.org and I can create a contract here. Um, so I can create a new, uh, a new workspace here. Um, So I can create a new workspace here. So I could create a new ERC20 token. Um, and I'm gonna call this Bill Bangalore. And I could create my token here. I'm gonna call it Bill Bangalore and it's gonna be called BLR, right? Now I could compile that uh, there in Remix, um, and I can go down to that Ethereum symbol there, and I can choose Injected Provider MetaMask. So that will now pick up Mycelium and allow us to deploy to Mycelium, should Mycelium be working. You can see it has got my balance there, 29.87. So Remix can see it from uh, MetaMask, but obviously it's not producing blocks. So if I try and hit deploy now, that will fail just because it's not producing blocks. But tomorrow, hopefully, that'll be working. You'll be able to hit deploy, you can go ahead. So if anybody's done any Ethereum development so far, this will all seem perfectly boring to you, perfectly normal as if you were doing to any other EVM network. Yes, please. Uh, is I believe the block generation, for some reason, the mycelium network has stopped generating blocks. But the blocks get mined. Yeah. So it's actually because transfers are also not working from the process. Yeah, this is, this, this is stopped. This is stopped. Something going on. Like I said, it was only launched about a week ago. This is cutting edge development on this. Um, and I think they've, they've noticed an issue with it. And so it has stopped at the moment. Um, uh, but hopefully this will get going again soon. So. 
That is um, deploying an ERC-20 token on mycelium testnet, sort of, right? Hopefully tomorrow that'll all work. Um, so the next steps we're going to use, uh, we have a repository here called the IPC uh, DX for Developer Experience Repository that is there, and that QR code will take you to it. This is a repository with a set of Docker images that just make it a little bit easier to work with uh, IPC. Because at the moment, if you want to use and do stuff on IPC, you need to have Rust installed, Cargo installed, you need to rebuild it. It takes like an hour or so to rebuild it. It does, it does a lot to get it all going. So this is just a convenient uh, set of convenient scripts and Docker images to allow you to run this yourself without having to install Rust and compile everything. Now, if you're getting to the stage where you're actually developing a specific subnet yourself, you're going to want to install Rust and all those dependencies because the main reason you'll be setting up your own subnet when you get to the production level is because you want to make some uh, customizations on it beyond what the general networks already do. That is the point of setting up your own subnet. You want to set up your own subnet so you can customize it. So in that case, you will need those dependencies and Rust installed in that. But this will give you a, um, uh, a, a way to kind of start this up using Docker um, initially without having to compile all that stuff. Um, caveat, of course, being Docker, what it does mean is when you start running it, it'll start download a whole bunch of Docker images, which being at a conference on conference Wi-Fi will probably then hamstring you just as much anyway. But um, that, that will at least uh, make that a bit easier for you. So we're going to create our own standalone IPC network, right? And we're going to do that with that uh, Docker uh, DX repo. So I need to clone uh, the repository. And I have, I have done that here. So the repository um, is here. So this is the, where that QR code would just have taken you to. And uh, I can call git clone here. Uh, which is what I've just done already here. And I've gone into the directory here where the IPC stuff is. And I can start it up simply by typing Docker. Uh, actually, just go to the top here. Docker compose um, up test node. And that is going to set up a test node, just a one single standalone IPC node that's not connected to anything else, right? Um, the next part of the demo, when we go ahead to create a, uh, a network that we would uh, connect to calibration net itself, so kind of like our own version of mycelium, so our own network connected to calibration net, um, at that point, we'd actually create multiple nodes because we'd have the consensus running between them um, to, to do all of that. But this, um, like I said, you should be able to do, and it should start running. So it uh, set up a bunch of stuff. It started to go, and it has actually completed here, right? So it's exited, but it's still actually running. Um, it is still running in the background here. So what we have now is an address for an Ethereum API. Uh, it's running locally on my laptop. And we have a couple of accounts created. And we have a private key for that account so that we can load into MetaMask, right? So I'm going to go back. And so where I set up for Mycelium, I'm now going to set it up from this local network I have running here, right? So I can go to MetaMask. I can go back to networks again, add network. I can say add network manually. And the network name, um, I'm going to call this IPC local node. And the new address is, so it's listening on all, all zeros, which is all known addresses. I'm going to ask it specifically for, for local host. But it's on port 8545. So port 8545. So that's our RPC URL. Chain ID, and that should be here as well. We have a chain ID here. So we'll copy that. And the currency symbol again, it's test fill, so T fill. So if I do that and hit save, we now have that network in MetaMask. And I can click switch to local node, and it'll switch that node. Now we need some funds. Now, luckily, when we started this up, it actually created some funds. It created a couple of accounts, 
um, and they both use the same private key, but they've already been funded. So I can import this private key into MetaMask. So I can copy that. Again, this is a local test node. Don't be sending private keys around. Don't be showing them. Don't be putting them on a display in a bunch of a bunch of people in a conference. But this is a test node running just on my on my laptop. If you're clever enough, you might be able to connect over my laptop over the public Wi-Fi because this is listening on all known addresses. So you might be able to get to my network. Um, maybe that'd be a fun fun task. See if anybody can do it before I finish this talk. Um, so private key. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to import that into MetaMask. So I'm going to go to MetaMask. I'm going to go to accounts here. Uh, account, uh, add an account, and I'm going to say import account. Put the private key in, import that, and it should show up. Right, we have a thousand T fill. So we've got a thousand T fill here, and we've got our address. So I'm going to go back to Remix. I'm going to tell Remix uh, to switch to this address. Um, the easiest way is normally just to switch it to one of the other networks and then back again. So I do that and switch back to MetaMask, and it should. Uh, oh, sorry, MetaMask is not connected here. I need to hit connect here or refresh the page, uh, one of the two. Um, so that's there, and I should now be able to choose. There we go. So it's our address ending in 26, which is, let's check that's right. Yep, it's our address ending in 26, which is the one that we got given uh, here. Right, so those accounts are in Filecoin standard uh, accounts, um, but uh, we have an account here in the, the Ethereum cell, but it's been funded, it's got a thousand T fill. So I can deploy to it. So I can copy that address, I can go down to deploy, I need to put that in, and we will see, if you watch down the bottom here, it should go, oh, ask me to sign the transaction, confirm, so it's done. Boom, complete, right? So that completed very quickly because it's our local node running here. Um, so that's near instantaneous. If you were running on mycelium, it would be about a second or so, which is much better than as, as Steb was saying with FEM on the main network, you're looking at about 60 seconds for a transaction to go through, 60 to 90 seconds for a transaction to go through on the main network. Mycelium, it's about a second or two. Running locally, it's even quicker. Um, so that's run. I can actually do something like I can interact with it so I can mint um, something. So let's see here, let's mint. If I put my address in there, uh, it's got 18 zeros. So let's say uh, I want uh, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So that should send, mint and send 50 of my uh, token that I just created to me. So I need to sign the transaction. Confirm. Now I need to import this token into MetaMask. MetaMask doesn't know about this, this token yet. So what I need is the contract address, which I can copy from here. I can go to MetaMask and I can say uh, tokens. I can say import token. And if I put the contract address in, it should pick up. It's picked up. I don't know whether you can see there. It's picked up the uh, um, uh, token name there and token decimal. And if I hit next, there we go. Oh, it seems I put a typo in. I called it BRL rather than BLR. I meant to call it BLR for Bangalore. Um, but it's BRL. So there we go. Our 50 tokens there. If I hit import, we have a balance there of 50 BRL, right? So again, if you've done anything with Ethereum and ERC20, that hopefully would be fairly straightforward um, and shouldn't be any difference doing anything with any other Ethereum network. Like I said, the main difference being is we've just deployed that to a local IPC node that is just running on my laptop. And you saw it's pretty quick to set up with that Docker image. You just start that, run that, and you can do anything there you want with that. Okay, so then... The final step of this demo um, is creating a IPC network that's not just standalone, but is actually connected to the calibration network. And again, we can do this with the Docker uh, repo. I'm going to walk through this. This will take a little bit longer to do this, um, but uh, I will show you this. If I go back here, I can say, um, 
Docker Compose is down. Test nodes stop that. Oh, uh, Docker Compose. Uh, Compose down. Right. Um, there's a script in here called setup subnet. And if I execute that, what it'll do is it'll run through a number of steps. These steps are actually outlined um, in the documentation here. This is the other, this is the deployer subnet quick start. Um, and it's got documentation here for what we're, what we're doing as well. Now, the first thing it does is it creates three wallets because we're going to create three nodes on our network that will be in sync with each other, doing consensus between each other, and then they'll be checkpointing up to the public calibration network. So it creates three wallets. Now, by default, when you run this, those three wallets will be empty, and they will not have any funds in, and it will tell you you need to go to this address here to fund each of those wallets. So you go to that calibration address, you'll copy that, put it into your browser, and you will put the address in of each of them in and hit send, and it will send some funds there. And so the balance will then be 100 for each of those, I believe. It sends you 100 for each of them. I've already pre-funded those to make it quicker for this demo. Uh, so I already had those. It's noted that those are all funded. So typically what it will do is it will loop and it will keep saying waiting for them to be funded. And until they're all three funded, it won't go any further. All three have been funded, so it's gone. It's now creating the subnet. So it's now interacting with the subnet gateway contract on the calibration testnet, the layer one network. And it is saying, create me a subnet. And it's going to be called this. So subnets have a path. So this, uh, the R signifies we're on a root network. And it's called 314159. That's the Ethereum chain ID of calibration. Then there's a slash. And then that address is a Filecoin style address that is the address of our subnetwork. Now, if I created a layer three, you would have another slash and then another ID on that. A layer four, another slash, another ID. So you'll have that hierarchical path of addresses, right? So that's done that. It is um, getting the public keys for that, and it is now joining uh, that each of those nodes to the network. And what it has to do is it has to stake some funds with that network. That's why we had to create that balance there, right? So it is staking the funds with some collateral. So this is taking a while because it interacts with the smart contract on the main layer one, which, as we said, takes 60 to 90 seconds for a transaction to go through. Um, and it's doing that three times once for each of these. So you can see that it's joined. Uh, it said here it's joined at epoch 1142626 for that first one. And the second one is running. And you'll see, again, it will come up with a join to epoch when this is complete. And it'll do it one more time for the third um, network there. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, sorry. This is, sorry, this is, sorry, a little confusing. Um, that test net we set up, the first one, local net, that is completely separate. So ignore that for now. We're now setting up a, sep a, a totally separate, th different thing that is three, a network of three nodes that is anchored to the calibration network. So it's ignoring that test, that test node one. That was just, that was just one just to show, show you you could get it running locally. And partly the reason I'm doing that is because of the error that we've got that's affecting mycelium. This will probably fail in a minute. So I at least had to show you something. So I showed you that test node one, which shows you at least we have it running locally and uh, you can transact with it, you know, interact with it. So, okay. So that, that first one, R3 or 4, one, that is the ID, that's the ID of calibration net, our public test net. So that's a, that's a known address, right? And then the next bit after it, that is generated um, by this script here when I when I ran this script. So let me just show you, if I just show you this script um, and just talk, just show you what it's going through, this setup subnet script, 
is a script here. Uh, can I get this to go? Is there a way to get rid of that? Yeah, sort of. Right. So when you run this script, it goes through and it uh, looks to see for the three wallets. It looks to see if you already have a key. I already did, so it was able to import that key. If not, it'll generate a new wallet address for each of them, right? It tells you what the wallets are, the addresses, and uh, it sets one of them as the default address for your network, and it goes through and checks to see if the, if the wallets are funded. So this is the loop where it, it, it expects you to go to the calibration uh, faucet and to fund those addresses. So it's told you the three addresses, you then have to go and fund them use it from that address there. So if you go to that address um, there, it will tell you, uh, if I just copy that. Yeah, I'll go there. Um, I need to just put the address in for each of those. So I'll go through, I'll take the first one, put that in there and hit send. Um, Thank you. Let's try it again. Right. Okay. There you go. Um, sometimes it's got some spam protection on there that for some reason triggers a little happily. So you have to sometimes redo it. Um, that's a transaction ID there um, that's just run. So that's sending now 100 T fill to that address, right? So. Yes. Yes. So these are the balances for my three nodes. Each one has a wallet. Each one has to stake some funds to the main to the parent network, right? And that's how the, and that and these funds are used for that node to execute transactions on the parent network to register itself. Exactly, exactly, right, exactly. So, um, like I said, then this block here is just checking the balances and just looping, uh, sleeping fifteen seconds and just looping until it notices that you funded them all, right? Once it's funded them all, it then creates the subnet. So it runs this IPC CLI command here, um, IPC CLI subnet create, and we tell it the parent, we tell it we want three validators, uh, we tell it the minimum validator stake is one T fill, and uh, that will then create that network, right? And it comes back and tells us the subnet and, and that is, when we look here, we see the subnet and we see this ID here that it's, it's, uh, it's created, right? It then gets the public keys for each of the wallets. It then joins the subnet, so it runs this uh, join command three times. That's the one that's taking some time because each one of those has to interact with the, um, the parent chain uh, to join it. And then afterwards, it exports the private keys into a direct into a file here, just so we've got those private keys for when we run the next step in this process. So that's completed. Um, it tells us we've got to set the subnet ID variable, uh, so we can do that. It gives us a command there: export subnet ID. I do that, and then we need to start a bootstrap node, which is part of the Comet BFT process, and then our validators. So we had three validators we set up. So bootstrap and then three validators. So we can start the bootstrap, and we can start that here in this terminal, and that should start up. At some point in this process, something is going to fail, um, but I'll get you as far as we can. And okay, it seems like here is where it has failed says the subnet does not exist. Um, so I think this is part of the problem it's having synchronizing with the main network. So it's created the subnet, it now can't find it, right? And I think this is the problem that the mycelium testnet is having. Um, there's some synchronization issue that's causing a problem here uh, with the calibration testnet. That should have succeeded. And then what you would have done is then run the um, Docker Compose up validator one, two, and three. And that would have started up with three validators. And once that's completed, you then have again an Ethereum endpoint, and you could configure MetaMask the same way as we've just done. You configure MetaMask um, 
with that and you'll get in there the what the new ethereum chain id is ethereum style chain id is from those validators from your new network okay but unfortunately i can't show that now so the the, the chain id is actually a hash of the subnet id right and the subnet id is a result of generating so that subnet ID is the contract address of the uh, subnet contract on the main network. So if we go back to here, I said on the system architecture, we've got this IPC gateway actor, which there's one of them on the parent network. And then for each new subnet that's deployed, you have this IPC subnet actor. And so the IPC subnet actor address is your um is your subnet address there yeah that is hashed and that gives you the ethereum id yeah so as long as that is stays the same your ethereum id will stay the same if that changes then your ethereum id will, will change as well um but it's guaranteed unique in the way that hashes are generally guaranteed unique and you hope they're not going to clash um with anything else so uh which it should should be okay with okay so, uh, like I said, unfortunately, that's as far as I can get. Hopefully, we'll be able to get further tomorrow here. Um, if you wanted, we had a, a like a, a, a like a quest at the at the Filecoin desk, and you could get one of these T-shirts here. Um, so we were hoping that people would go ahead and do this. It's a little unfair of us because the network is down, so you can't do this. Um, but if you go ahead and run that test node one, run that test node one. Um, just deploy a smart contract to that and come and show us and um, then we will uh, uh, give you a give you a t-shirt or, or go through as far as here if you get through as far as here and get to the error that's fine we'll uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll let you off there that's our fault not yours so you've got it there have you right okay then then come up and we'll we'll give you a t-shirt still okay question yeah Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So I, just before this demo, I was trying to get this working. I was like, why is it not working? Why is it not working? Of course, you know, demo gods and you're, you're, you're kind of, um, is, is there a specific, I keep, we, we kind of colloquially talk about demo gods, but I'm just wondering, in India, is there an actual specific god for demos? No, there isn't. How, how, why, why not? How many gods have you got? Like six billion gods and you don't yet have one for demos. Okay, I see a business opportunity here. Um, <laughs> So, or a cultural opportunity, however you want to. We can create one. We can create one. We'll create. A, I can't believe nobody has done this yet. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so, uh, yes. Yeah, so I was trying to get this working, and it wasn't working. I was like, "Why is it not working? Why is it not working?" Then up pops up on Telegram my colleague, um, who says, "Yeah, sorry, the network stopped. Uh, it stopped producing blocks. That'll be why." So um, I don't think this is entirely my fault. I think this is uh, the, the fact that the network has um, stopped on there. But they're hoping to get that restarted tomorrow. Um, like I said, this is brand new, so there will be some teething issues. Hopefully, it'll stabilize over the next week or so. Um, so, if anybody is at the, who's going to East India, the East India Hackathon? Put your hands up. Okay, cool. About half the people here. Great. Um, we'll have a whole bunch of uh, bounties for doing stuff, mostly related to general Filecoin, IPFS, LibPTP, etc. But as a stretch goal, if somebody wants to do something with IPC, please do so. Remember, there be dragons, but and no gods. But um, if you want to, please do. And we do, you know, have a have a we have put a category in there and says if you do something with IPC, uh, we'd be very interested. And um, yeah, we could bring something there. Uh, there is a production version that is uh, Yeah. Yeah. I will uh, it will uh, communicate between the network between the five of the Yes, yes it, it will do. Um uh yes. Uh I'm not entirely sure how it does that, but you have that bootstrap address. Um so that, that boot the sorry that bootstrap node, when you start that bootstrap node, it gets given a bootstrap address. And that address I believe you have to give to the individual validators. They know where the bootstrap is. And that is the point of the bootstrap node to then give the rest of the validators the information they need to be able to communicate with each other. I believe that's... Yeah, yeah. So you have one bootstrap node and then multiple 
validate it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. So you and, and if you had it on separate ones, you wouldn't be able to use that simple, you know, setup script because that's intended to run. Yeah. And and you should be able to go to um in GitHub. Uh, so this is all part of so all of this is part of the uh, what's called the IPC shipyard organization, which is where Consensus Lab, which is the R and D lab that created this within Protocol Labs, they've got a bunch of repositories in here. Um, and if you look for one, I think it's under Fendermint. So Fendermint, so IPC is built upon Tendermint, the Tendermint Consensus Protocol, which is used by Cosmos, um, and because and F, and F, RFEM, uh, EVM. So FEM plus Tendermint, Fendermint, um, the fantastic with names. Uh, so there we go. And there's some documentation here. Uh, does that point to the same one? Right. There's some documentation here um, that will take you more into the deeper side of things, um, actually setting up Comet BFT locally. Uh, so this is, this is all the stuff that's automated by the Docker images and the script. Um, but if you're running your own node on, on separate hardware, you'll probably want to go through all of this. This also gives you all the information you need for setting up the Rust environment because one of the things that you, like I said, you possibly want to do with this sub, with setting up your own subnet is customizing the node. So you might create your own syscalls to do something um, because that is the whole advantage of creating your own nodes. You can be more flexible with it and implement things in there that you might not want on a general network. So there we go. Hopefully that was useful even with the non-existent demo god not smiling on me, that's why. It's permissionless. It's permissionless, yeah, exactly. It's permissionless, yeah. It's totally secure, because you can't run it. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Great, well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll probably be over at the Filecoin table today and tomorrow if anybody wants to come up and have a chat during the panel. Yep. Cool. Great, yeah. Oh, uh, it says it's not running, but it is actually running. Although it does say exited with code zero, it is actually running. If you go to that, if you if you try and uh, so, yeah, yeah, put that in MetaMask, it will work. Yeah, sorry, that's a little bit misleading that it exits, but although it's still actually running. So, okay, great. Thanks a lot.